you know, Tremont Edmonds, he's got the pedigree in the uh, family. So oh, yeah. these guys come in with a lot of confidence, with a lot of expectations. So, you know, um, you know, I think they can live up to it for sure. You know, but I, I definitely feel that I will say this. If Tremont is there, number nine, no trading. Yeah. We take him. <laughs> we take him. OK. Are you listening? Nine Ron Bowles Sports here, representing the Niner Empire organization worldwide. <laughs> ah, fam, days away. The guys are already in camp. They're getting all pumped up. They're getting in condition. It's just a matter of time. We're going to get our draft picks. And from that point on, it's all downhill and into the valley of a good time. Return to 49er football. And this year, we're coming back with some help. A brand new plan and a Jimmy G that's oh, you talking about ready for prime time. <laughs> Fam, on, oh, thank you for allowing me to come in and talk more 49er football with you. As you know, I gotta do it. Fam, Joe Staley, I had no idea he was only paid what he is. Joe Staley was gonna collect $11 million within the next two years, that was gonna be the max of his salary. I think he's underpaid. I think he's been underpaid for a while now. They fixed that. The 49ers called Joe in, and he's now going to get $17.4 million within the next two seasons. You know, Joe was getting ready to retire, right? This, this is why guys like Joe Staley, he's been an all-pro for how long? You know, he ain't missed a couple of years, but you know, that's not, he's still Joe Staley. He still does a great job. But this guy's gonna stay around to protect Jimmy G's blind side. You know, within the next two years, chances of us getting to the playoffs. And I, I'm not, I'll leave it right at that because I get attacked. Hey, man, don't be saying that to make us give us bad luck. No, I've learned my lesson, all right? But I am saying this things are looking up, and Joe Staley needs to be there for the party. He suffered enough. He needs to go with us into the next level. How about that, okay? But Joe will be picking up 17.4 million. And you're probably guessing, in two years, should the 49ers pick up somebody in the draft this year and let Joe train him for the next two years since he's gonna be here? Well, here's, your, here's the thing. Joe Staley can train him, but the thing is, the heir apparent is most likely going to be Trent Brown. Now, I know we've heard things about Trent Brown that have not been favorable. In fact, they're saying things about Trent Brown as if he doesn't care enough, that he's not dedicated, that he's just not putting in a big enough interest. I think it stems from the fact that last year, remember Trent opted to go ahead and get surgery, shut it down, and he opted to go ahead and get surgery on that shoulder. Maybe the 49ers misinterpreted that, or maybe they didn't, I don't know, because we're not that close with Trent, we just, we can only see so much. But Trent is actually the heir apparent to Joe Staley's side. So he'd be moving to the left side, getting paid left. Well, he's getting protected. You pick check to the quarterback. You're going to get a higher pay rate. So this is what's going to motivate Trent this year to do a little better or at least impress the coaching staff, which I thought he was already doing, but apparently not. So that's your heir apparent, but the 49ers can still look for a right tackle. I mean, you think about Orlando Brown, who's, <laughs> you saw Orlando Brown in the combine. I think his stock may have rolled down a little hill a little bit. Just because, you know, Orlando Brown was a beast out of Oklahoma all year long. But during the, during the combine, which, you know what, you shouldn't read too much in the combine. Some great players have had bad combines and done well in the NFL. But Orlando Brown looks especially bad. Now, I don't know if that's going to hurt his stock or not. But if Orlando Brown, hmm. If Orlando Brown were to slip into round two, there's a no-brainer, especially that far down into round two. I don't care what he did the combine. You pick up Orlando Brown. And then, of course, there's Colton Miller out of UCLA. We saw the 49ers actually talking to him. Uh, he's got a lot of upside, but he's kind of, and you know how they say, he's a little bit raw. So I don't know exactly what that means half the time. Is he going to be okay or not? I always wonder about that. So you got him, and then of course you got Connor Williams, the Texas Longhorn. Those would be the three guys I'd be interested in picking up if I'm the 49ers. 
in order to, and we do need to back up a young talent to get him ready because we have a lot of guards, but we don't have any tackles really. There's a cut Williams. I, 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 we got, we got Gary Gilliam, my favorite guy. <laughs> I'm Gary, I'm just kidding. I love you, man. We got Gary Gilliam and we got the Williams kid. And that's I, all the tackles I know of. So they're gonna have to move off from that. I, or move, move into an area where they can actually get something to build on, right? So I'm, 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 I'm thinking that's gonna be the case. By the way, fam, Tremaine Edmonds or Roquan Smith? Which one is your choice? Because it seems we're divided into two camps now. Nobody's looking beyond those two guys for linebacker. And most of us are looking at the first round because we're concerned about the Ruben Foster situation. They're both, they're both fast. Four, five, I believe. Four, five, one is Roquan. Four, five, four is Tremaine Edmonds. You make your choice. Roquan is a traditional size. He's about six, one. I don't think he's big enough now, but not, not for today's NFL at that position. And then you got Tremaine Edmonds. He could be the prototype for the future. This guy, to me, has it all. And something else I do not like about Roquan is his tackling. Roquan can actually be moved out by a good... <laughs> You've seen him? I'm just saying. Roquan can be taken out by a block. He's not good at shedding. And with his quickness and speed, he should be. Maybe it's just a technique thing. Tremaine Edmonds. That man's got technique. I've seen him sweep and use skills to get past those guards and anybody else is coming downfield trying to move him out of a play. For that reason, I also look at Edmonds, his versatility. Edmonds can play the Sam. He can play the Mike. He can play the Will. He's going to grow. He's going to grow. Can you imagine? He's 19 years old. He'll be 20 going into the season. He's going to put on that grown man size and strength within the next two years. Maybe three. And that means he's got versatility, as I say, to play any place in the linebacking area, especially for Salah's defense. Tremaine Edmonds is my guy. I know, I know. I, I, I've been listening to Roquan Smith arguments. I'm, I'm not saying. If we get Roquan, I'll be fine. But I do prefer Edmonds. The problem is I know Chicago does too. And look at it this way, fam. It depends on how many quarterbacks go in that top echelon of the, of the draft in order to get down to us in a second because there's a potential of six spots to be taken with one, maybe Barkley, in that top five or six. After that, you do the math. We still have four people or four players that are top five quality. Whoa! Anything may happen. Now, what we don't want to do is overreact just for, I mean, Ruben, we don't know what's going to happen next. So the panic is already on. A lot of people, most X act, pretty much everybody's assumed he's not going to play with us next year. So if you overreact, you start reaching and you do things like, if Roquan's not there, if Tremaine's not there, what do you do next? You go to plan B. John Lynch has already said, we are not going to modify our draft board because of the Ruben Foster situation. But realistically, he has to. So you figure it is going to be a linebacker in the first round, and I don't want them to pull some kid. Well, they're not going to. It's too high to pull uh, other guys from the linebacking crew. So you move out of that position with Ruben. Fam, I'm going to tell you the truth about it. Reality is, there is no Roquan. There's, just, there's lots of Roquans, but there's no Ruben Foster in this draft. Ruben Foster was one of the top five in the NFL. In fact, some surveys have him all the way up to number two in the NFL last year. Ruben didn't even play the whole season. My God, what if he would have played the entire season? Ruben Foster might have been called or put up right up there with the number one linebacker in the NFL. Suffice to say, D-Roy would have been his. I know about Lattimore over New Orleans. Ruben Foster would have beat him had he played the whole 16-game season. And I have a feeling he would have been to the Pro Bowl as well. This is not going to be duplicated. We've got to move on. And you know something, fam? I got repent to Jesus here today. And we've talked about some other ways to also administer to this situation, whether it be another player or different positional groups shifting into packages and all kinds of things. I think you'll enjoy this. Let's go talk to repent to Jesus right now. Light of fam! As you may notice, the very well-developed dude, you've probably seen him 
on the radio program and on weekends. It's Repent to Jesus. Joining me today, he's going to talk about some 49ers football because Repent always has plenty of things to say. I always feel bad when I say, Repent, we're out of time. We got to go. So I say, Come get Repent in here. Let him really let himself just go crazy on us, man. So, hey, Repent to Jesus. How was, hey, man, how you doing today, man? Uh, I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me, by the way. Tell you, man, you know, Repent, you know, we got to do a video one time with you, like, giving tips on how to work out, man. Look at this dude's body. Repent, what? I know you must have worked out today, man. What'd you work out, man? Oh, man, went heavy on the squats. Four sets of eight at 295, oh! man. It was, it was painful. Oh! It was painful. <laughs> and we're talking you know? four sets of eight reps. The dude didn't just, like... That's not, the, that's not your max out there. You must go around 325 then. If you can do four sets of eight, you can do more than that. Way more, actually. No, no, no. Absolutely. I I actually messed around one day and uh, decided to, I think I hit 335 twice just to see where I was at, you know? So uh, yeah. I got some video footage. I, got, I actually recorded it, so I got to show you, man. You got to do that, man. Uh, I'll, I'll post it up, man. I'll put it on the app. Say, check this dude out. Y'all, if you guys think... That he's just got like muscles he can take on and off and lay in the closet. Dude is for real, man. Getting up underneath 335 pounds. Up, down, hey, once, Rumble. two. <laughs> Rambo, you don't know, man. I actually graduated from Cal Berkeley, all American, uh, quarter miler sprinter. So, Ooh. you know, I could run that 4 4 if I needed to. So, Ooh, check you. But those days are gone, man. <laughs> I mean, because I was the I was the quarter, I was the four hundred meters man. You know what? We got a lot in common. I, you know what? A lot, what? Yeah, four hundred meters. Oh, that's man. that's that's the crazy man's race, man. So you are insane. I love it. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's a sprint from oh, beginning yeah, to end. We're gonna have to talk about that another day, man. Oh, we do, man, because we get on that all day, man. You go, you know, let's. I got. That's crazy. That's cool. I got repenting here, also, man. We, you know what? We got a linebacking situation. I'm going to jump on him. You know, I've been talking about it anyway. Repent, we had a linebacking crew last the last few games when Ruben showed up finally. We were able to stop the run. And now, all of a sudden, here we are trying to figure out what we're going to do. Can, oh, can we thrive without Ruben for any length of time? Oh, man. You know, uh, I don't think you can replace Ruben. <sighs> But through the draft, we can find somebody that can still be efficient as Ruben was, you know. So, um, you know, looking back to the first game with the Rams, we got ran all over, man. Oh. And, you know, we don't want to be having Garoppolo throwing for 500 yards, you know, scoring 45, 50 points a game just to keep up. Mm. And. You know, the defense is going to be in a really bad position if they can't get off the field. That's right. And you know how you know what it's what, what, uh, what it's going to be like, Rombo. Mm. You can't stop the run. Next thing you know, you're going to have play action. You're not going to be able to stop anything. So the run is a huge priority. Absolutely. Yeah, and there's some theories out there. You know from people that call into the program all the time. And and normally the Derwin James game, you know, you, you, you listen to what they're saying, and now I'm thinking, if you had to compensate, one theory has it, you bring in a Derwin James or a Minka Fitzpatrick or any of those hard-hitting safeties, and you deploy them somehow strategically a little closer to the line of scrimmage. Are you thinking that that might work, or is that something that just sounds like a, a, a shot in the dark that may or may not work? I mean, what, what do you think about that? No, it can work. You know, when you compare these other linebackers, Rombo, some of these linebackers are undersized, yeah, but their speed yeah. is making up for the game. Yeah. You know, you got uh, Rokon Smith. He's an undersized linebacker, but guess what? He can run fast quick, and hit hard. Quick. You know, so if you have a big safety, I believe Derwin James is, what, 6'3", 218, yeah. 215? He's somewhere in there. You know? Hey, man, that guy could put on another 10 pounds and could be rock solid at that position. You know, he could be a big safety. He could be a smaller linebacker combo. So I, I definitely think it can work, especially with these running backs coming out the backfield 
with blazing speed. Mm. You don't want to be, you know, you don't want to be getting beat by those guys, man. When they go five wide out on you, yeah. and now you got to cover a lot, a running back. Mm. That's not going to be good. Oh man, you know, yeah. And, and, and the thing about it, I think Derwin James. Oh, when I think about Derwin, he's the only guy that I really think that puts the hammer down hard, can move quickly. There's probably others that you know that are flying under the radar, but yeah, that's 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 a good shot. Oh hey, and also. I got it. Vita Vey, and we came up with this just a few days ago. And Vita Vey, we haven't had, and, and, and eventually I suspect that DeForest Buckner is going to become something of a cowboy replacement. But you know, uh, Smith is going to be tough to. Uh, the thing is, what he did is why Alden Smith's career is shot off. He had three guys coming after him because I married Smith. I mean, the dude was like crazy, man. You can see three or four guys trying to stop him. Alden Smith or any other outside linebacker, even when uh, Ahmad Brooks was hanging around on it. If he had to come right. around the other side, he's got, man, I got space everywhere. The quarterback is mine, man, because they're trying to deal with Justin. I got this. So now, Vita Vey, and as I say, DeForest Buckner's going to get there soon, I figure. But to get Vita Vey in there, he's already this kind of monster. Vita comes in, you, you watch him work. When you watch him, even on his film right now, the people are coming at him. Vita's like, hey, get out of the way. They're hitting him with all they got. Vita's just <laughs> moving him around. Man. And he's trying to find the quarterback. I said, oh, oh, that guy. That's the one. Nobody can stop this guy. He's, what is he, 355 or something crazy like that? He moves light on his feet. I mean, the guy looks like he weighs about 245 the way he moves out there. And he's got all that size and power and rage in him. It's like you're watching the Invincible Hulk all of a sudden in a football uniform. <laughs> I mean, but right, this, right. this would make the outside linebacker more effective. He also stops the run. He's a combination to me of what the entire front line could be in one body. I mean, what are you thinking about that? Is that another route to take? That That is definitely a route to take because... You're absolutely right. That defensive line is going to be able to control the line of scrimmage, mm -hmm. which is, you know, a huge part of the uh, uh, of stopping the run. Um, you know, I, I I'm still skeptical though, Rombo. Every 49er great defense that we had had amazing linebackers. You know, yeah. it it was a benchmark for the Niners defense. All right. Going back to Gary, you know, Gary Plummer, you know, uh, Norton Jr., man, these guys mm. were ballers. So, you know, I I definitely think it can work out. Uh, first round, I really wouldn't mind that. You know, like you said, it's going to make a huge difference at the at the point of attack. Mm -hmm. However, I'm just I'm just a little bit nervous now that we're going to have to you know, maybe go in the second or third round for a linebacker mm. that may not be as talented. And, you know, um, Earl Mitchell, he, he is, he is doing okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Our linebackers, they're not doing okay right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say the least. Exactly. You know, and the linebacker position now has become our biggest weakness now on the team, you know. So yes, I love the idea of Vita Ben, but we we got to make sure we get a, we it. get a good linebacker yeah. afterwards. And and maybe maybe we could trade down, go up number twelve, yeah. you know, get another draft pick, mm. use maybe the you know the two the the, the two number twos. Yeah. And maybe go up and get Rashad Evans, you know. Ooh. I would love that. Yeah. Okay. That'd be awesome. So yeah. um and, oh man. And, yeah, and there's so Ruben, many routes to take. And, and upon Ruben's re Ruben's return, should that be the case, uh, he'd love to see his old buddy uh from, from Alabama, wouldn't he? That guy with that kid would yeah. You know, uh, Rambo, as of right now, that that's a, that's the toughest thing about it is we don't no, we're, I know. we're not really counting on Ruben Foster to I come back. I, to be honest with you, I'm not. I know. I mean, and you, and you unless, need to. You need to look forward and, and, and plan on that anyway. So you're right. Go ahead. You know, I mean, unless his girlfriend comes out and says, look, I completely lied. I made the yeah. whole thing up. I'm emotional. Yeah. Unless she says that, even if she doesn't show up to court, imagine this. <sighs> there, there's 
still going to, you know, come after the Niners. Yeah. Mean, your guy is still guilty for what he's, you know, for what he did. It's just that his girl didn't want to show up to court. Yeah, that was- and then, you know, Roger Goodell is going to be like, uh, you'll be out at least for the season. Yeah, at least. And, and you know, that would be warranted, too. Uh, right. I, and I, you know, and by the way, I wanna, for if you're watching now, know this. Neither of us condone Ruben doing what he did. That's why I'm glad R2J said what he said to make sure if the girl just goes out and says, okay, he didn't, I made it all up yet. And she looks like she's been paid off to say that. Then you're right. You're right. Public opinion is going to be outrageously bad. So, oh man, they're going to, they're going to be able to read between the lines. You know, nobody's done. This is yeah. happening too many times now. So man, un, un, unfortunately, they're gonna, I think they're going to try to make an example out of Ruben Foster. Oh, uh, it's such a scary thing. Okay, well, you know what? In that case, you mentioned the draft. Is there anybody? Because I only see Tremaine and Roquan as being our only two options. We, repent, we could lose those two guys somewhere between whatever pick and nine. So, you know, I, 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 this is why the options scary, but... There could be other gyms out there that could be doing just... I've read some nice things about a few other people, and I can't think their names right now. Uh, DJ Calhoun from last year. Uh, you mentioned um, uh, Rishon from uh, Alabama. You know, it, it gets... You know, some of those guys come in and think, oh, man, they're expecting me to cover for Ruben, man. I'm, okay, guys, I'll do the best I can, but I know what you're looking for. Can you imagine coming in under the shadow of Ruben Foster, a generational talent? <laughs> oh, Oh yeah, absolutely. Even coming into the Niners organization, Period. man, you know, filling in, filling in. I mean, you're not assisting; you're filling in a huge hole, you know. So that, and that's why I, you know, I feel like we do kind of have to go off, go after some heavy hitters yeah. like Tremont Edmonds and Roquan Smith. These guys are come from uh, at least, you know, Alabama, uh, Alabama, Solid even programs. you know, uh, great programs. Even uh, you know, Tremont Edmonds, he's got the pedigree in the uh, family so oh, yeah. these guys come in with a lot of confidence with a lot of expectation so you know um you know i think they could live up to it for sure you know but i i definitely feel that i will say this if Tremont is there number nine no trading yeah. we take him <laughs> we take him okay if raquan is there you know what? I'm not as excited <laughs> at number nine. I'm not. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm not as excited. But I still think, you know, we got to take him. Yeah. Even though, you know, we probably could have waited enough. You know, waited a couple more picks. But mm. you know, the Raiders are trying are, are going to be trying to get him. Yep. The Dolphins are probably going to be trying to get him. Yep. Um, but you know, they. I th- I think our target, you know, linebackers. You know, is this too much to ask for Rambo? No. You know, should be in the first and second round because, you know, you have you have the guy from Boise State, you know, uh, and you have another guy uh, from, was it from Texas? I think it's Malik Jackson. Oh, Mal- oh I forget you know? about Malik. Yeah, he, he's a fast one, you know. Ah. So he, these guys, like I said, you know, these guys could, you know, it would make People me feel job. better, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. If they went first and second round, back to back with some linebackers, you know, uh, then I would feel a little bit better. Yeah. You know, and I mean, you know, are, are, and, and let me ask you, are we being too hard on Malcolm Smith? <laughs> you know, we haven't seen him. We haven't even seen him step onto the field. You know, I mean, should we? I tell you what, Malcolm Smith is going to start. I, what we're trying to find out is what we, we've got no depth at that position. We've got Brock Coyle is going to have to play, and he's got a bad shoulder. I don't even know if he's going to start this year. And we're concerned with the future. Smith is liable to that contract front-loaded, so I suspect the 49ers are going to start dumping salary uh, probably as early as this next season, depending on how much money we got to do- dole out for some of the kids that are expiring contracts. So I figured that was a strategic move in the first place. The 49ers, I got a feeling, from what you just mentioned, the 49ers are going to get linebacker in the first round, and we got two third-round picks. They may, I, you know, in order to add some uh, more selections other than just that one position, they're probably going to go something different in the second round, I suspect. So you got to get, <laughs> you got to get a linebacker that first round. I don't know if they're going to be doing any manipulation and trading back up into the first round or whatever like that, because right. they're probably still going to, they're still going to want to have to go after an edge guy. 
So it's, like, it's, it's really complicated in that draft room right now, is my, my thinking. So, yeah. Absolutely. I, I think, you know, let's work with what we have with now. You know, they have a number nine pick. Sure. Boom. A linebacker. Mm-hmm. They, have this, they have the second, you know, pick, you know, a late second pick. Um, you, like you said, maybe, you know, most likely, you know, they're not going to go back to back linebackers. I mean, uh. they went, you know, back to back offensive linemen that year with, you know, Upati and stuff. And but, Davis, yeah. You know, you don't, yeah, you yeah. know, but you don't see that happen too often. So you're right. They might end up getting a, you know, uh, you know, maybe an offensive player, you know, with the second round. But the two third round picks, that can definitely be used to where they can come, go back maybe into the late first round or the mid second round and maybe get, you know, their, their uh, talented player or linebacker that they're looking for mm-hmm. as well. Because, yeah. that's, you know, because yeah. there's, there's a few needs and I, and I just keep wondering, where is the priority list? And Ruben makes the priority list shift toward the, uh, the linebacker position. So that's why I'm thinking, oh, man. I don't know how the 49ers, but you know, they're, they're brilliant. They're going to strategically they're gonna lay this out and it's going to come back in. And I suspect there's going to be a trade. Uh, they got two third round picks. We got two seventh round picks. I don't know how much those two seventh round picks can fetch, but maybe you pack them up with a, <laughs> one seventh round, one third round, and take our second round. Can we get back into the first round, especially with a team that has two first round picks? But that only leaves us able to deal with possibly Buffalo, and Buffalo wants a quarterback. Or the New England Patriots, they also want a quarterback. So you know, it, it's God. It's hard to figure out what they're going to do, how they're going to do it. It's so complicated. Hey, but if they wanted to, um, Eric Reed is still out there, right? Yeah, now. and it's him. You know? What do you? Are you willing to bring back Eric Reed, especially for some of these roles we were talking about earlier, with platooning so, him in various places? No, absolutely. So the last time. Uh, the last thing I read was that Eric Reed was willing to come back for one year on the salary they paid him the year before, which was a little bit over $5 million, you know? Yeah. So, um, if we can get, you know, for example, Roquan Smith, um, and maybe target some other players yeah. in the second or third round, right. Eric Reed could easily be signed on yeah. easily, you know, be transitioned back to the defense yeah. and take over his role that he was playing. And, Man, they need that leadership right now. Yeah. Eric Reed would be huge on a team. And, man, he's got the size and he's got the agility to be able to make some plays, man. Mm-hmm. So, and he knows Thala's uh, defense. That's, that's, that's key also. He won't have to come in and have to learn anything. He knows what's going on already. And, they, you know, and he'd be right with the team because everybody's working on the second year. This is what I like about this team this year. We're not, we're not going into another defensive situation this year because the last three years in a row, New defense, new defense. We gotta learn a new defense. Oh, no. You know, I said, oh man, that's they gotta horrible. feel their way around for the first two that's or three horrible. games. Yeah, so that's not happening this year. I'm feeling good about that. And and, and and we have to consider too, Rombo. You know, do we really want that ma- that many that much inexperience as far as rookies at the second level? Yeah. You know. No. So, you know, Roquan Smith. Yes, he's talented, but they're not going to be all Roquan Smiths. Meaning. You know, you're going to find some inexperience, you know, some slider lack of talent. So, you know, I'm not sure if you really want that at the second level. Because I remember even with Ruben Foster, it took him a couple games to get adjusted, yeah. you know. Yeah. And next thing you know, man, this guy was like lights out. Yeah. But, you know, it's nice to have that experience. Eric Reed, I think, can, can provide a lot. I think so. You know, I, for the second level. I, I, you know, and I, they got to be thinking about it. I mean, maybe the, maybe the 49ers did not. I, I, there's no way to know exactly. There's no real reason that, that other than they just wanted to let them off because of money reasons they got to extend that contract and they're, they're becoming very frugal on the cash now anyway so you know hopefully that's all it was so we'll see oh man tell you what it's time for us to say goodbye but listen before we go you got to go ahead and join me on this holla and i and we're at levi stadium and as i oh, jimmy j and his many touchdowns are coming this year <laughs> i tell you our DJ, we just scored the TD on three, two, one. We gotta give the cheer. Three, two, one. Nine. I can tell he's rehearsed that. That was done too well in tone and everything else. <laughs> I've been practicing with the kids, man. <laughs> R to the J. 
Thank you, fam, for giving me some of your time today. Oh, I knew I'd enjoy that conversation. <laughs> I hope you did too, fam. Hey, Thursday, finally, schedule, times, places, where? All gonna be decided Thursday. You and I gotta talk about and celebrate and get crazy about those games. I wanna see you on Thursday. You need to subscribe so you can get the notification as the women coming in. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait. I hope it's the Raiders early. I, you know, we got our favorites. Anyway, I'll be looking for you then, all right? <laughs> Please, like. Don't forget to, wait, wait, come back, don't forget, hit the like, subscribe, and share. I can't wait to Thursday. I'll see you then. Count me down. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Tonight! Oh, this is crazy, mother.